I guess he just had it with me and our fights and arguments and literally just said, hello, I want to discuss something very important with you. And I asked you to take that very seriously. Uh oh, that sounds like Igor has gone into chat GPT and asked it to compose a breakup message, doesn't it? We all know where it's going from here. So what happened? Is Igor finally going to be honest with Nikki that he's not actually attracted to her? I mean, over a text message? Wow, Igor, that's cold. Now, before we dive into the breakup and the tears, let's start at the beginning. With every high, there's a low. And the last time we saw these two, they were on a high. They were soaring. They were enjoying their engagement party with friends and family in Moldova. But when we join Nikki today, we learn that she's been back in the States for two weeks. And while she's at the studio preparing to be interviewed, something very unexpected happens. <laughs> Nikki's shocked, she can't breathe properly, and she begins to cry. Clearly something has happened with Igor, but we don't know what yet. She's in a state of shock, she's not really saying what's happening, and it's at this point that text appears on screen informing us that Nikki has been back from Moldova for two weeks, and whilst at the studio, she's just received a message from Justin. Yeah, I can be a bitch sometimes because I've dealt with so much with him. For you to just act like dispose of me, like I'm nothing. That, Nikki, is a bit of an understatement. I mean, your whole relationship with Igor is rotten to the core, but let's not pretend you don't give as good as you get. You're not the victim in this relationship. We all know we've seen firsthand that Nikki has this habit of using whatever she knows will hurt Igor the most against him in order to get her own way. So with that in mind, I'm really sorry, but I'm finding it hard to pretend despite the theatrics and the tears, that Igor and Nikki splitting up isn't the best option for all parties. Because it is. We used to be now, the producers give Nikki the opportunity to leave, but of course she's not going to do that. She's determined to bravely soldier on. She's determined to tell her side of the story. So in between bawling her eyes out and acting shocked, somehow they manage to finish doing her makeup, put on her dress, do her hair, and then finally sit her down in front of the camera to juice this as much as they can. We literally just got in a really bad fight a week ago, and um, we haven't really spoken. And we've had fights where we didn't speak for a week. Nikki reveals that it only took one week after she returned to the States for her and Igor to have an explosive fight. And ever since, they haven't spoken. Yeah, hardly healthy for a couple who are engaged to be married, is it? Now, according to Nikki, this period of no speaking after fights has happened before in the past. So as a result, she apparently wasn't overly concerned by it. But that raises the question, what was the fight about? He hasn't really had a job job and worked, so I have been pretty much supporting him this time, like throughout this whole time. Ah, money. This isn't the first time that this topic has been brought up. Even while she was in Moldova, Nikki definitely seemed to have a chip on her shoulder about how much money she'd been sending Eagle. Now, Nikki claims she's sent him money to renovate his apartment, money to fix his car when it broke down, and various other Western Union transfers just to support him day to day. I've got no doubt all of that certainly adds up. But does she really have any right to hold that against Igor when she's known all along that she's essentially a sugar mama? And I was like, for me, I feel like you're using me. I mean, I went off, you know, went from zero to a thousand. Okay, fine. But I guess since I didn't squash it, 
Notice how Nikki acknowledges here that she went from zero to a thousand. She said something she readily admits has hurt Igor and his pride. But, conveniently, she doesn't elaborate on what that is. She downplays her part in this. It's as if she just expects Igor to put up with her verbal abuse because she's the one paying the bills. Only, whatever it is that she's said seems to be the straw that broke the camel's back. I guess he just had it with me and our fights and arguments and literally just said, hello, I want to discuss something very important with you. And I asked you to take that very seriously. So Igor's translated chat GPT message says, given all the circumstances, I have come to the sad conclusion that our relationship cannot continue. Now, is breaking off your engagement, is dumping your fiancé over text message incredibly cold? Yes, of course it is. But from the sounds of things, from what we saw firsthand, Igor really seems to have lost himself, lost his identity, even lost his name in this relationship. He's been broken down. This isn't the real Igor. And the true extent of how much he resents this becomes more and more apparent as the message continues. I compromise and I sacrifice my own interests, shocking my parents and everyone around me, including my status and my dignity. However, continuing in this manner is no longer possible for me. Igor says that he needs to take back control of his own life. And that seems to be the reason why he's dumping Nikki. But despite feeling as though he's lost himself in this relationship, he ends the message by wishing Nikki well and saying, may you find a path to a worthy life filled with love and mutual attachment. Farewell, and I wish you all the best. It's a hilariously formal message. But that phrase that he's chosen, mutual attachment, is such an interesting thing to say. Because we've all had our doubts about how mutual his and Nikki's attachment was. It seemed a bit more one-sided than mutual, didn't it? That's what you'd tell somebody after all the years invested all money and heart. Isn't it funny how Nikki put money before heart? She always takes every opportunity to remind us just how much money she's spent on Igor. And we know she's used that in the past to leverage sex, which is incredibly messed up. But despite the constant arguing, despite Igor admitting that he's cheated on her, and despite Igor not wanting to have sex with her, Nikki is still acting devastated. She still wants him back. I even texted him back, like begging, let's try to make this work. Baby, please, please give me one last chance. I promise I will respect you. I'm sorry. I can't do this life without you. At least she is acknowledging that she can be disrespectful and rude. But I can't help but wonder just how many times she's apologised for her zero to a thousand behaviour, only to do it all over again. There has to be a reason why Igor is 100% done with her this time. And from the way that Nikki's acting, this breakup text isn't usual behaviour from him. I put three hearts and he just ignored it. He's not even giving me the option to talk to him in person. That hurts. Igor, how can you possibly ignore three hearts, you heartless b****? <laughs> I mean, in all seriousness, you do have to question what's changed with Igor. Why has he gone from being in love with Nikki to now pretending she doesn't exist? Unless, of course, he was never actually in love with her. Now, Nikki continues to cry as she says that she just wanted her fairy tale ending. And it's at that point that she decides to cut the interview short. She says she just can't do it anymore. Could Igor have really been in a relationship with Nikki for all the wrong reasons? Could it be that he was just with her for money and a visa? Well, yes, of course he could. But if that was indeed the case, isn't it curious how he's the one to break things off just as he was about to move to the States? Like, it doesn't quite make sense. Something about it doesn't add up. 
and when we catch up with Nikki the next day, her mum has come to check in on her. She called me upset last night and she told me that Justin broke up with her. I was shocked. Nicole. <laughs> She's crying. Now, Nikki's mum opens up the curtains to try and get some light into the crying dungeon that Nikki has set up for herself. It feels like a post-breakup scene from a teenage movie. Nicole's convinced that her world is over. She can't go on. Now, her mum asks to know what exactly happened. And there's one particular detail about the whole thing that she just can't get over. So he text messaged you, broke up with you yes, in his text message? Yes, through a text message, message you don't do that. <laughs> That's cold. It really is. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't exactly expect Igor to fly to America to break up with Nikki. But, at the very least, he could have jumped on a phone call. I mean, he is breaking up with his fiance. He is breaking off a relationship that spanned on and off for almost two decades. Nikki does deserve more than this. She deserves closure. Because right now, she's still clinging on to the hope that maybe Igor might just change his mind. I spoke with my attorney. I haven't cancelled the K-1 visa because he told me just keep it open, like, you know, like, sometimes people change their mind. It's true, Igor could change his mind, but I don't think he will. This seems like a well thought out, calculated move. He didn't break up with her on a whim. I mean, if Igor was impulsive, he would have broken up with Nikki a hundred times already. So it feels like he's sat on this, he's reflected on it before sending that message. Maybe he's just realised that he's been lying to himself about his love and attraction for Nikki. But I don't think he was in love with me. And how can you make somebody feel so insecure when I've done everything for you? There she goes again, talking about all the things that she's done for Igor. But what Nikki doesn't seem to value is what he's given back to her. This is exactly what they've argued about in the past. Igor's tried to be a supportive partner. He's tried to do romantic things for her. He's tried to be her emotional support. But Nikki just spits it back in his face every time she brings up the topic of money. And I can understand if he's upset because of the way I spoke to him and called him a user. Like, okay, I was wrong, you know, but there's many things he said to me and I swallowed it, you know? Look at Nikki literally roll her eyes when referencing her own behaviour. She's clearly not taking that as seriously as she should. She called Igor a user, which is a direct attack on his entire personality. And yet she feels like everyone should just brush that off. It's not a big deal, she thinks. She thinks that Igor just needs to get over it. This is not enough to break up over. We have so much on the line, but so much it, invested. Okay. I really thought he was sincere. Me too. Now, on that point, I do actually have to agree with Nikki. The fight itself shouldn't have been enough to end their relationship. But what she needs to realise is it probably wasn't the fight that caused the end. You see, Igor's been bottling up his unhappiness for quite a while now. We have seen his unhappiness spill over from time to time. We have seen him take some jabs and make some inappropriate remarks. Only now, it seems, he's realised he can't continue like this. He's not prepared to sacrifice his self-esteem theme anymore. Which, ironically, is exactly how Nikki's mum feels about Nikki too. Nicole needs to heal at this point and she needs to rebuild her self-esteem. What I hope for her is that she finds peace. And as she's departing, Nikki's mum hugs her, urges her to jump in the shower and tells her to go outside and get some fresh air. But the problem is, this has all been very traumatic for Nikki. She's already mentioned in the past that she thinks it's nearly impossible for her to find a man who accept and love her knowing that she's a transgendered woman. And her fear is that at her age, at 47 years old, that challenge will only get more and more difficult. I can't just unlove somebody because I had genuinely in love with them. 
husband's going to be hard for me to get over him. Maybe, just maybe, you won't have to, Nikki. There's a chance that despite knowing how terrible this relationship is, Igor might change his mind for the opportunity to live in America. And I have a feeling that if that were to happen, Nikki would welcome him back with open arms because she's just so scared of being alone.